Hi everyone, this is Brian Hayes, and welcome to a discussion on adding vibrato to the clarinet. Vibrato is simply the fluctuation in the pitch and the pulsation in the sound that all the great singers and stringed instrument players, wind instrument players, down the history of music making, have used to create their own signature sound in the way they play their music. If you're new to the concept of vibrato, I recommend you check out my tutorial on adding vibrato to the flute. Now the physical way in which we produce vibrato on the flute is entirely different to how we produce it on the clarinet. However, the end result change in the sound of the instrument and the fluctuation in the pitch and tone of the notes produced is identical. So if you don't understand what vibrato is, check out my tutorial on adding vibrato to the flute. Today we're going to use just the mouthpiece, ligature, reed and tuning barrel from the B-flat clarinet to demonstrate how to produce vibrato on the clarinet. Now if you happen to play the bass clarinet or any of the other members of the clarinet family, the concept is exactly the same. Just for the purpose of the demonstration though, the pitch that will be created will be coming from the B-flat clarinet mouthpiece and tuning barrel. I've got my chromatic guitar tuner set up there and it's just picking up the various pitches of my speaking voice at the moment. But we're going to use that tuner to test ourselves when we sustain a pitch just using the mouthpiece, ligature reed and tuning barrel of the B-flat clarinet. The objective of the exercise is to produce and sustain a pitch on this part of the clarinet that's equal to the note F concert. Now remember, the clarinet is a B-flat instrument, but we've only got part of the instrument here today. We're trying to produce the note F on the piano or on the guitar, not F on the B-flat clarinet. Just like this. Now, you may have noticed that my first attempt at producing the F concert pitch was not 100% in sync with the benchmark set by the tuner. I had to make some minute adjustments to my embouchure to correct my initial attempt at blowing that F concert so that it became in sync with the tuner. And the adjustments I made use the same technique that we've got to get really good at if we want to produce a natural vibrato on the clarinet or on any of the single reed instruments. So that's all of the clarinet family and all of the saxophone family. Now, when we produce any long tone, just like that F that we produced before, if we in any way move our jaw, remembering our bottom teeth are connected to our jaw and our bottom teeth are being cushioned by our bottom lip, if our bottom teeth open up, if our mouth opens up as if we were yawning like that, and that's great, greatly exaggerated. If you did that, well, you know, the clarinet would just fall out of your mouth. But that same concept of a yawn where your mouth really opens up by your jaw lowering, that's how we produce the vibrato effect. So in essence, it's a very minute opening and closing of your mouth like a chewing motion, but I don't like the, the term chewing because that indicates that you're biting into the mouthpiece. There's definitely no biting. It's an incredibly small movement of your jaw and you're just ever so slightly opening up your mouth by relaxing your bottom lip, but it's a movement of your jaw, not your bottom lip. Your bottom lip is very, very hard to control. Your jaw is incredibly easy to control. If I want to open my jaw up and, and go like this, I've been doing that all my life. We all have when we speak. Our jaw is moving when we speak and when we eat. So it's nothing new to control our jaw. Controlling our bottom lip and trying to get it to do something is a whole vastly different story. So think back to the exercise where we blew a constant pitch. And for the sake of picking a pitch, we said F concert. Just watch what I do this time. All I did there was I started on that F concert 
and I just opened up my jaw. I kept blowing and I just kept opening up my jaw. I'll do that again. Now it gets to a point where the reed won't vibrate anymore because you haven't got, if you open up your mouth too much, imagine if you had your mouth like this. There's not enough pressure around the mouthpiece and on the reed to force it to vibrate and to get that tunnel of air to shoot through the reed. So we're talking about a minute movement of our jaw. That exercise I just did there, I'd like you to try just so you can experience that by opening up your mouth, you lower the pitch. So try that. Try that with me now and just slowly open up your jaw, lower your jaw to the point where the note will stop. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Okay, so you get a pitch bend there of probably about, certainly more than a semitone, maybe about a tone. Now, in vibrato, we only want to move a fraction. We want to adjust the pitch just a fraction. We don't want to go like this. So, like some sort of ambulance sirens. That, that would be horrendous from a musical point of view. But we'll talk about a little bit more about that towards the end of the tutorial about how the width and speed of the vibrato determines the era of music. And you can instantly hear when you hear a recording of a singer or a violin player or a trumpet player, saxophone player, clarinet player, the way in which the style of vibrato that they use really pegs the era of the music that's being played. So going back to pitch bend, First thing is, is to try and just lower the note, lower your jaw until the sound completely stops. Then you've got some understanding of how you can affect the pitch by your jaw. By dow. Remember, it's not your lip. You're not going, you're not trying to move your lip. You're just going top teeth, jaw, dow. You're opening up your mouth by lowering your jaw. Now, a really good exercise is to grab your metronome, set it at 60 beats a minute, and every beat, try and vary the pitch alternating between starting pitch and dropping the pitch. This sound. Da, two, three, four. Try that with me, okay? One, two, three, four. Now the only thing I'm doing to drop that pitch is I'm ever so slightly dropping my jaw. If you've never tried it before, it can be really tricky, so, you know, don't be overly frustrated. Everyone struggles a little bit with this concept when they first try it. It's hard to get control over your jaw and not just let the note just splat out or stop altogether. But use your metronome so that you've got a mechanical exercise. The last thing we do when we use vibrato is think about how we're going to use it. Remember, it's our personal signature sound. We're all different. Our fingerprints are different, and the way we sign our name in the written form is different. No two signatures are identical. No two vibratos are identical. And remember, vibrato is one of the ways that you can instantly identify who a player is. If you get good at doing that, so that's 60 beats a minute and just pitch bending every crotchet, every beat, you can then try and, and accelerate, leave the metronome the same, but instead of bending in crotchets, try and bend in quavers. So one and two and three and four and two, three, four. Get the idea? Again, very mechanical, not musical, but we're trying to train our jaw to make the movements, the little minute movements required to play vibrato. I just want to wind up this tutorial with a brief discussion and demonstration 
on vibrato in a practical sense. In 1961, the late, great UK-based clarinet player, Aka Bilk, released his worldwide smash hit instrumental single titled Stranger on the Shore. That recording remains the highest selling popular clarinet recording of all time. It sold well over a million copies and continues to sell today long after the passing of Aka Bilk. If you go to YouTube and type in Aka Bilk, Stranger on the Shore, original recording, you'll hear the 1961 mono recording of that world-famous instrumental clarinet classic. Now, the first thing that will strike you is by today's standards, Ackerbilk's use of vibrato is horrendously wide and horrendously fast. It's almost comical in nature by what we have learnt to expect nowadays insofar as a singer or instrumentalist use of vibrato. However, you have to remember that in 1961, popular music was different. It was just the start of the rock and roll era, but take rock and roll out of the equation, and the popular singers of the day and the players all played with a much wider vibrato than we hear today in 2016. I've recorded a more modern version of Stranger on the Shore, just a quick arrangement. I'm using a more modern sounding band in the background and I'm playing just with my own natural vibrato, but in tribute to the great Acker Bilk. I'm not trying to copy his vibrato, that would sound corny by today's standards, but I am playing in a vibrato style that acknowledges the great Acker Bilk's ability to capture the hearts and minds of the world back in 1961 with that amazing success he had with Stranger on the Shore. So have a listen to when I play this and watch closely my jaw. I'll film it reasonably close in and you'll hear and see some minute movements of my jaw that's creating the natural vibrato that's my own signature use of vibrato. Here it is, have a listen to Stranger on the Shore. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that tribute to the great Acca Bilk and also learnt something from the tutorial on how to introduce vibrato to your clarinet playing. As always, keep in touch via my website. That's www.brianhayes.biz. B -I -Z. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and drop me an email if you have any fundamental questions about playing the clarinet. Bye for now.